welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License course. You know, chances are that you're not pursuing uh, your amateur radio license for the purpose of specifically uh, learning about uh, radio direction finding or radio control, um, contesting, or, or even connecting a radio transceiver uh, or linking it over the uh, internet. Uh, but like me, I hope you discover these uh, exciting aspects of the amateur radio hobby and uh, you know, you uh, learn as you go. Uh, these skills can prove uh, valuable not only in the end of the world as we know it scenarios, uh, but it can also help out in uh, assisting during natural disasters and uh, local emergencies. So are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is Lesson 8, Part 2. I am Gary Stevens, KE2GS, your instructor. In this section, uh, we're going to be covering operating activities. Uh, has to do with uh, radio direction finding, radio control, contests, uh, linking over the internet, and grid locators. One of the nice aspects of uh, radio direction finding or uh, fox hunting uh, hidden transmitter hunting uh, is you can make a lot of the equipment yourself. Uh, this uh, photograph illustrates a homemade uh, highly directional antenna or Yagi antenna using a tape measure. Uh, but for the exam you need to know that radio direction finding is a method used to locate sources of noise interference or jamming. To some people this may be intuitive and others maybe not, uh, but a highly uh, Directional antenna is really useful for uh, locating hidden transmitters or uh, sources of interference and that type of thing. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a directional antenna would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt. Many licensed operators enjoy the, uh, the thrill of making as many contacts as you can uh, in a specific period of time, and this is called uh, contests. Uh, so for the exam, know that contesting is the operating uh, activity that involves contacting as many stations as possible during a specific period of time, uh, which is typically a day. During uh, contests, things can get quite hectic. Uh, so keeping things simple is always a good idea. For the exam, you just need to know that uh, to send only the minimum information needed for proper identification and the contest exchange is a good procedure when contacting another station in a radio contest. Um, at some point, people figured out that uh, it's simpler to use a grid location system to help uh, locate a person's uh, geographic location. Uh, for the exam, you just need to know that a grid locator is a letter number designator assigned to a geographic location. As you may recall, DTMF is uh, dual tone uh, multi frequency signals. Uh, and IRLP is uh, Internet Radio Linking Project. Um, for the exam, you need to know that by using DTMF signals is how access to some IRLP nodes is accomplished. So amateur radio uses uh, the, uh, virtually the, the same process that uh, something like Skype uses, uh, which is uh, voice over uh, internet protocol or VoIP. Uh, for the exam you need to know that a method of delivering voice communications over the uh, internet using digital techniques is what is meant by voice over internet protocol or VoIP as used in amateur radio. You also need to know that uh, the Internet uh, Radio Linking Project or IRLP is a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters uh, via the internet using uh, voice over IP, uh, internet uh, protocol or VoIP. Uh, sometimes uh, we don't always have access to the internet to uh, find uh, uh, 
a list of nodes that uses uh, voice over internet protocol. Uh, but there are repeater books uh, that you can uh, find. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that you might uh, obtain a list of active nodes that use VoIP by subscribing to an online uh, service uh, from an online repeater list maintained by a local uh, repeater frequency coordinator or from a repeater directory. Uh, because of uh, legal constraints, uh, it's necessary to validate or, or to prove that you have a license uh, prior uh, to connecting to a service like Echolink, uh, which uses a voice over uh, internet protocol to connect to a, a radio transmitter. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know before you use Echolink system to communicate uh, using a repeater, you must register your call sign and provide proof of license. Uh, most people are fairly uh, computer savvy this day and understand what a gateway is. Uh, for the purposes of amateur radios, it's just uh, uh, how a radio link is connected to the internet. So for the exam, you need to know that a gateway is the name given to an amateur radio station that is used to connect uh, other amateur stations to the internet. In this next section, we're going to talk about uh, non-voice and digital communications, uh, such as uh, image signals, uh, digital modes, CW, packet radio, PSK31, APRS, uh, error detection and correction, NTSC, uh, amateur radio networking, and digital mobile uh, and migration radio. So, um, for the exam, you need to know that uh, packet radio, uh, IEEE uh, 802.11 and JT65 are all digital communication modes. Uh, packet radio is just packets of information. Um, uh, IEEE uh, 802.11 is the internet and uh, JT65 is just a type of packet. A relative newcomer to uh, uh, amateur radio is APRS. Uh, it's been around for quite a few years, actually, but you know, in terms of uh, the the length of time amateur radio has been around, it's relative newcomer. Uh, for the exam, you just need to know that the term APRS means Automatic Packet Reporting System. Just about everybody's familiar with GPS these days. Uh, but when you use uh, GPS in conjunction with uh, APRS, uh, you can get real-time information, which is uh, useful, especially in times of emergencies, uh, you know, to a, a central office or to an uh, emergency management center. For the exam, you need to know that a global positioning system receiver is a device used to provide data to the transmitter when sending automatic uh, position reports from a mobile amateur radio station. Yeah, personally, I think that uh, fast scan TV is uh, kind of an interesting concept. Um, here is a photograph of uh, a slow scan TV broadcast that, that I provided uh, uh, as a demonstration to a group uh, years ago. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that an analog fast scan color TV signal is a type of transmission as indicated by the term NTSC. As I talked about in a previous slide, um, you know, real-time tactical digital uh, information is uh, really useful. For the exam, just know that uh, providing real-time tactical da uh, digital communications in conjunction with a map showing the locations of stations is an application of APRS automatic packet radio uh, or reporting system. Another acronym that you need to know is PSK. Uh, it stands for Phase Shift Keying. Um, and the test question is something like uh, the abbreviation PSK means Phase Shift Keying. Another newcomer on the amateur radio scene is uh, DMR Digital Mobile Radio. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that DMR is best described as a technique for 
uh, time multiplexing two digital voice signals on a single 12.5 kilohertz repeater channel. Uh, for the exam, you need to know the, the different parts of uh, a packet transmission, such as headers, checksums, data, and uh, repeat requests. Uh, so for the exam, just know that the following may be included in packet transmission. A checksum that permits error detection. A header that contains the call sign of the station to which the information is being sent. And an automatic uh, repeat request, uh, request in uh, case of error. It can be argued that uh, Morse code is a, a type of uh, digital mode because it uh, it's, tends to be kind of binary. It's a signal that's either on or off. However, the length of time that it's on or off can skew uh, its meaning. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that International Morse is a code used when sending CW in amateur bands. Uh, other types of digital modes that are, are really fascinating are uh, things like Earth-Moon uh, bounce, or you bounce a signal off the moon and somebody else on Earth receives it. Uh, weak signal propagation beacons, which uh, sends out a hundredth of a watt signal to see how far propagation goes. And then meteor scatter, which will bounce off the ionosphere. For the exam, you need to know that all of these uh, are activities that are supported by digital modes. Uh, ARQ is an acronym that means uh, Automatic uh, Repeat Request. Q for request, right? Anyway, uh, for the exam, you need to know that an ARQ transmission system is a digital scheme whereby the receiving station detects errors and sends a request to the sending station to retransmit that information. Another cool thing you could do as uh, amateur radio operator is create a uh, kind of a, your own private internet uh, with lots more power. Um, for the exam, you need to know an amateur radio-based data network using commercial Wi-Fi gear with modified firmware best describes broadband hamnet, uh, also referred to as high-speed multimedia network. Uh, one of the latest uh, shiny toys uh, in the uh, digital world is uh, the FT8 digital mode. Um, it's able to uh, dig some signals way out of the noise. Uh, anyway, for the exam, you need to know that FT8 is a digital mode capable of operating in a low signal-to-noise condition that transmits on 15-second intervals. An electronic keyer is a device that uh, uh, will essentially send uh, uh, dots or dashes depending on which direction your paddle is, uh, key is depressed. Uh, for the exam, you just need to know that electronic keyer is a device that assists in manual sending of Morse code. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's lessons. Uh, please uh, show your support by clicking the uh, subscribe button below. Well, until next time, never stop learning.